All right, so the deal has got over the line. Diego Laxalt is a Celtic player on loan from AC Milan. And joining me now is Conor Clancy from Forza Italian Football to tell me all about Diego Laxalt. Uh, Conor, first of all, Diego Laxalt, he hasn't featured for Stefan Pioli's side so far this year. Is he a player that's out of favour in AC Milan? Is that why this deal has gone ahead? He's out of favour in Italy at the, at the moment, to be honest with you, just generally speaking. he He's a player who used to be someone that people got excited about here, um, particularly when he was in that t- Genoa team a couple of years ago. He went to Milan and it never quite worked. I think the Milan move is a move that, if you asked him now, he would probably say he regrets because the club weren't in a good way when he went there. He had other options, most notably from Atalanta, and I think that would have been a much better fit. Then Teo Hernandez came in at Milan, the writing was kind of on the wall for Laxalt. He went off on loan to Torino. And again, he joined a club that were experiencing some some difficult times. And nobody could have foreseen how bad Torino were going to be last year. So, yeah, Laxalt has kind of been a victim of circumstance, you could say. But um, he not been perfect himself either. Yeah, and we're chatting about a player who has played at a World Cup for Uruguay. And he's played in the Europa League for AC Milan as well. So is it just that he just hasn't been playing to his potential or do you think he's been a little bit unlucky with his career? I think it's definitely a little bit of both. And I do actually think that if you wanted to speak to anyone about Serie A and get a positive review on Laxalt, you pick the right person. Because I quite like him more than most people seem to. But I, I do think it's been a bit of bad luck. You know, I mentioned the Atalanta thing there. If he had gone to Atalanta one of the several times he was linked with them. Um, Particularly when he went to Milan, it looked like he was definitely going to sign for Atalanta. And if he had gone there, I think we'd be having a very different conversation about Laxalt now. Um, And I don't think he'd be, with all respect, going to Celtic now. Um, Gianpiero Gasparini is someone who always does a fine job with wingbacks in particular. And the Milan situation, I mean, it's hard to name any signing before last season who went to Milan and has been a success. Kier, Teo Hernandez and Zlatan have changed that over the last 12 months. But yeah, I, I do think he has been quite unlucky. Yeah. Celtic, are they getting a left back or are they getting a left wing back here? Because from all accounts, he's pretty much a left winger converted into a left wing back. Yeah, that, that's exactly what he is. He is not a left back. Um, I've I've seen him being reported as such in various media outlets over the last few days and I've been sitting here pulling my hair out because it's kind of generous to even call him a left wing back, you know, because as you said there, he's very much got the characteristics of a left winger. He just happens to play further back on the pitch, or at least nominally, he's he's named as a left wing back. But as you'll come to see over the next few months, he loves getting forward at any given opportunity, even when it's not really an opportunity to get forward he just goes up anyway you know he he, he's going to be someone who will contribute with assists or certainly with attempted assists and he he might get a couple of goals as well but even with his best format at Genoa he was never really a goal scoring wing back you know but yeah he will be getting forward he's going to be caught out of position defensively um, and he will make mistakes that will drive you a little bit mad at times but I think in all he could be quite a good move for Celtic if if he plays as a left wing back if he's if he's on the left of a back four no not a hope what's his delivery like because I know with these left wing backs a lot of the time the frustration can be that they've they're really good at getting into positions but once they get there they can't do anything with the ball certainly the case with Jeremy Frimpong at the minute who plays right wing back with Celtic so is his service any good? Is his crossing any good? It is quite good, yeah. And a lot of the, the time over the last few years, he's, he's not exactly played with the best of strikers. With, with Milan for so long, that was their problem position. And he was delivering balls when he played that, that weren't being converted. At Torino, okay, Andrea Bellotti is quite a good player. But he, even at Genoa, he probably had his best form there. And that's, Genoa had this weird spell of having strikers who were just delivering and Laxalt coincided with that. But I do think he'll be able to put in a better ball than you might have seen before. Yeah. So at the end of this loan deal, which is just a year long, 
AC Milan have included an option to buy. They currently want about nine million. Do you think Laxall will be worth that in a year's time? He will be twenty eight at that stage. It seems a little bit overpriced for me. Yeah, I think we're probably coming at this from two similar backgrounds. You've got your price and what you think about a price is determined by Scottish football, whereas for me it's determined by Italian football, and that is always considerably lower than what happens in English football. Um, Nine million does seem a bit much. I'm I'm not sure I'd be paying that for him if he were to move to Atalanta next summer, for example, but um, I think this is just a my interpretation of price so like if you think about Timothy Castagna went from Atalanta to Leicester this summer another wing back and he went for 25 million the the general consensus around Atalanta was 25 million is a really good sum we we know Castagna is a good player but 25 million is a lot of money but then he's impressed in in England which hasn't surprised anyone in Italy who's seen him over the last two three years and the idea in England is that 25 million is a good sum. You know, it's not expensive, whereas in Italy it's quite expensive. So, 9 million euro, I'm not so sure, but, but we'll see. If he fits the system and he's the right guy, well, then why not? But I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to claim to be an expert on Celtic's financial situation, so I'm not sure how much that would be for them. That would be their highest signing. And I'd say, I'd say it could be their highest signing ever. Um, okay, well, don't do that. I could, I, could, I could be wrong in terms of players in the past, but I, I'm pretty sure that it would definitely be their highest signing in the last 10 years by far and away. Um, just before I let you go, Connor, Celtic do take on AC Milan, who they're getting Diego Laxalt off. Um, firstly, what are the thoughts of Celtic in, in Italy at the minute? Do they still think they're one of the giants of Europe? Or what, what is the general outlook of Celtic in Italy? Um, there's nobody is under any illusions that Celtic, like nobody thinks that Celtic are still a, a giant, you know. But there's definitely a respect for what Celtic have been in the past. I think you could probably draw parallels with a few years ago before Ajax had this recent resurgence. When teams played Ajax, there was still that wow, this is this is that club, you know. But they they weren't so much that on the pitch anymore. There is a little bit of excitement because back 12, 13 years ago, Milan played Celtic in, I might have been the Champions League, and there was that dramatic night yeah. in, in Glasgow as well. But yeah, um, a lot of the, the attraction with playing Celtic away is the, is the atmosphere that gets generated there, you know. And unfortunately, because of the pandemic, that's not quite going to be the same thing. So that does take away quite a considerable amount from it, to be honest. But no, there's definitely a respect. For, for the club that Celtic are. And Celtic beat Lazio home and away last year in the Europa League as well. AC Milan were considerably lower than Lazio for a large chunk of the season last year. What sort of AC Milan side are we looking at now? Um, they're, they're a much better team than they were last season, particularly in the first half of last season. Zlatan Ibrahimovic has changed everything, basically, even when he's not playing. The, the whole mentality of that squad it has completely transformed. Simon Kier is another at the back who has just brought a level-headedness and experience to that team. Teo Hernandez at wing-back, is um, he's, he's a very, very exciting player. Very powerful. Very good going forward. And he is the reason that Laxalt is surplus the requirements there now, you know. But yeah, this Milan team are quite good. And it's worth remembering as well that that Lazio had kind of, I mean, Lazio couldn't have cared any less about the Europa League last season. Mm -hmm. So I do think Celtic will have a a sterner test in Milan, not because they're better than Lazio, but because Milan will take it a little bit more seriously and they'll be going to to win the Europa League if possible this season. Conor Clancy from Forza Italian Football, thank you. Thank you very much.